Hello, my name is Gergely Brodgum, and today I'm going to talk about secure delivery with Flux and the open component module. Our time is limited, and I would like to also show a quick demo about it. So most of the information I'm going to provide will be uh, available through websites and public demos and uh, further readings, basically. Um, so let's dive in. Uh, the agenda is I'm going to talk about what is OCM, what does it do, how can it help, and how do we combine it with Flux. So let's talk about uh, OCM first. So OCM is called Open Component Model. It's, an, it's a new standard introduced by SAP, and it basically describes uh, how to deliver software artifacts. So it's an SBOD. It's a software bill of delivery. So you define what you would like to deliver in, in uh, so-called components. And this is all technology agnostic and it's a machine readable format. So what does this mean in practicality? We define software in blocks of code through YAML. So for example, if you have a, a software called uh, uh, I don't know, PodInfo, for example, which is a popular testing software in Kubernetes, <clears throat> uh, software that you can deploy in Kubernetes to, to test it. Uh, you would define it. It has a backend, it has a frontend, and it has some sort of cache. And these are your components, basically, that you can define in a YAML uh, in this new standard, in this new format. And once you define it in this YAML, you can then define... Uh, um, further things to do with it, for example, to deliver it somewhere and then verify that the component and its, uh, and its further components are the same as they are. They have resources and sources and further component traps into it, in it. And then you would use the OCM uh, CLI, which is uh, provided to you to sign this component to verify it. So. This is all very complicated, so let's step through it um, um, a little bit. So the magic happens because of the tooling that it has. In, on GitHub, there is a um, there's a, an organization called Open Component Model, and this organization has all the components that are or all the repositories that are necessary in order to use OCM. Um, you can write your own tooling for the specification, of course, but this has been provided to you. The OCM is the main uh, uh, repository here. This is a library and the CLI together. The library provided to work with the specification and the CLI provides further tools like transferring, and signing and verification and building up uh, a component to um, to you to, to basically utilize the spec. And so, what we did is what what does this mean? Is that um, basically using this tooling, you can once you define your components, you can create a for example. You can create a, um, a transport archive, archive, something that is called transport, transport archive. And once you sign your components, the signature and the verification is all inside the component. Uh, it creates an artifact in an OCI blob. And you can further then use the tooling to transport this blob anywhere that you want, uh, for example, into a fenced environment or uh, like an atomic U-boat and, um, and an environment that is very strictly monitored. And because, uh, because of how you use to create this component using the component specification, everything will be offline. Basically, it will be transported uh, to you, including the images, including all the files or that are linked with your component and that you provide access to. So these accesses that you define, that you would define are many. They basically, uh, they can be a GitHub repositories, release artifacts. They can be an OCI repository. They can be a, uh, I don't know, a, a simple tar file. 
anything that you define an access for, it will fetch this component, it will fetch the, the contents of it. And that's what you will assign and then validate and verify. So there are further options. It's not just, uh, it's not just sign, signing and the verification process. Process is also, it's also that the, uh, for example, if you have an OCI image that you would like to fetch, um, once you sign and verify your component, it can be, it needs to be pointing to a local uh, image repository that you have running somewhere, for example. Once you transferred from a public place into a local place, you need the component to point to this local environment. So that's localization. When localization happens, everything will be replaced based on some rules that you define in the component file. And these rules will make sure that, for example, images will be replaced. And for example, in a hand chart, instead of pointing to a Bitnami repository or something like that, it will point to a locally downloaded tar GZ that contains the hand chart artifacts. And that's what localization uh, provides. And then there's configuration. This uh, configuration, it can be further used to configure the end result. So for example, what I will show in the demo is that we have a PodInfo application. It has uh, certain configuration options, for example, a backend or a, a background for the web, web interface that it has, or replica count, for example, uh, how many replicas it runs, uh, one, two, three, whatever. And these are configurable objects. And this is entirely reproducible, so this needs to be something like uh, I can deploy this or uh, I can use this um, to, to transfer my component anywhere, uh, anywhere and it should look the same. So this is a component version. A component version is a specific version of your component. So for example, for PodInfo, there is a PodInfo version, which is a 0 .0, uh, 0 .0, 0 0.0, 0.1, Point zero, and um, and these are the resources that the resources that it defines. It has an image artifact that it points uh, to a a location. It has a chart and some manifests. The manifests will be used to deploy this application, and they are simple Kubernetes manifest objects. And then we have a, another component reference. So this basically, you can reference different components in your component uh, descriptor to build up a hierarchy. So we have a pod info component and it references the backend, it references the front end, it, and so on and so forth. So you can build up a dependency chain basically between the components. So the guts of the OCM uh, uh, component is it has sources, these sources point to the actual source that contains your application code. This can be used further for code analysis, for example, or running uh, uh, security checks and so on and so forth. Has resources that we saw. These are OCI artifacts, blob, star, hand charts, whatever. And then references, which are all the components. So where does Flux come in into all of this? Flux is V at Weaveworks um, uh, working closely together with SAP. We, we built a system called the MPAS system, name pending, uh, which consists of five different controllers, which I'll, uh, which I'll talk about in a moment. So these controllers use the specification to build up something called the product. This product represents a single application. The, um, this a single application deployment. Um, we use the OCM specification to build up this application and then further enhance the specification and its capabilities to do delivery. And this we did with Flux. Um, basically what happens is that we take the component resource, we transform it into Kubernetes objects and then let Flux do all the, all the basically the applying and the reconciliation and the version handling and um, and everything like that is through Flux. So our main repository, for example, that deals with all the manifests that we generate will go through a Flux repository. 
So we have this concept of a project. A project is the highest, the, a, a high level representation of something that an admin would start to build up. A project could have several components or several products. These products are basically installations and they can, um, the deployment is done using selecting targets. These are all very like new, com uh, new uh, concepts. And I am linking to a further reading that can be found here to, to read about these subscriptions and, pro and the product details and all that jazz. So what happens is that uh, we bring in this component, we identify it, we do localization and configuration based on some rules. And then uh, using cho choosing a target, um, we deploy the application. So right now, so what is the target? So right now we only have a Kubernetes target. This means that we will use the end result of all that process, the localization, the configuration, and all the replacements and everything. And that will result in a manifest bundle. And we will take this manifest bundle and select the target for it. The target selection happens through labels. So for example, you have an environment that, it's, that is ingress enabled, that has a load balancer deployed, and you wish uh, uh, to deploy in this environment, then you would, uh, then you would use a label selector called uh, Kubernetes uh, ingress enabled, for example. And based on that, we select the target, that will have a, a, a Kubernetes uh, config file in it, and Flux will do the deployment into this remote cluster in a specific namespace. And what it deploys basically is this bundled manifest thingy that we create uh, uh, an OCI repository for. So internally, we are running a OCI registry for the MPAS system and this OCI, OCI internal OCI registry is the sharing point between our system and the Flux system. So Flux can read from this OCI re registry uh, and we just put stuff into this OCI registry and Flux takes care of the rest. It's, uh, it's beautiful. So enough talk, let's try to walk through um, walk to the demo really quickly. So I already have this environment running here. We had a lot of stuff. We have a lot of stuff uh, in here, and this is all public. So this demo that I will show here uh, can be found here. Uh, this link is in the slides. So MPAS public demo. You can uh, download this and then um, play around with it. It further explains what kind of uh, components there are and what it does and what are the concepts. So let's talk a bit about concepts. Um, we have two organizations. We have the so software provider who will build the product. And we have uh, a consumer who will consume this product. The product is a PodInfo application. So we have the MPAS application here and we have the PodInfo component here. The first thing that we will do is create a release. This release will use OCM, so, uh, the, the CLI, to, to basically build uh, Tecton. We are using, in the demo, we, we use Tecton to, to do this building process, do this building process. So here we can follow along how we will use the OCM library to publish a new release, a publish a new component. So basically we build it, we sign it and transfer it. Where do we transfer it? So the transfer is from the provider into the consumers, um, uh, into, the, in, into the provider's uh, repository. Um, provider's OCM repository. This is a locally running TTL server. This all runs in the cluster. So once you are finished with the demo, you can tear down the whole thing and nothing will remain on your computer. So this is all self-contained. 
Um, so if we push into the local registry of this component uh, of this software provider organization, the consumer will subscribe or will take from the uh, provider's repository and push it into their own registry. And this is done via a subscription. So subscription subscribes to the, um, to the software provider and the destination is the consumer's uh, registry. Uh, we provide some secrets of, of, of course, uh, accessing, uh, accessing any, uh, any of this information and for verification purposes, we do this. So signing, this is very important. The whole chain is verified from the beginning to the end. Once it gets into the MPAS system, we sign it with an internal key, which is automatically generated. And then all of the components in the EMPA system will be able to verify that it's in the system, that this is the same component that we are using and it hasn't been changed, only configuration and localization has been updated, but the component itself is still the same. And uh, so the supply chain is basically secured uh, via signing. The OCM library um, also provides integration with cosign, so we can be sure assured that uh, our component is the component that we deal with. So once we subscribe to this component, I will, uh, um, I already created a project. The project consists of several folders that describes uh, products and whatnot. So I'm going to merge now into my GitOps repository, two projects, uh, products, sorry. And one is PodInfo and the other one is Weave GitOps, which displays uh, information about our uh, cluster. So here the subscription defines that I would like to subscribe, um, uh, generate a product for this subscription. So once we, once we apply this, we will get two new pull requests from our system. The pull request contains a bunch of things. Uh, for example, a readme and instruction how to configure things and the product deployment. This product deployment describes our product, what kind of uh, components it has, what kind of resources it contains, and it creates configurations and localizations out of that. What we will also get is a validation check. This checks for validity of the component and it checks for validity of the configuration. If the, conf the configuration right now is based on uh, is based on uh, policies, but this changed to queue based configuration in the future. So queue based configuration can be validated based on a schema. So once I merge this commit, um, the whole deployment and selection and target process uh, starts starts to spin. Spin. It selects a target. It selects. A target. We can follow this uh, in the in the product controller log. All the things are happening. It creates uh, uh, certain things, uh, objects, and then it basically deployed the pod info application. It deployed in it, it deployed it into this cluster because right now all the target I have in here is a Kubernetes target, and it doesn't have a configuration a Kubernetes configuration in it. So the deployment happened in the same cluster in which the target is uh, residing in. But we have, um, <clears throat> so once this PodInfo application has been deployed, the demo is configured with, uh, with um, uh, credentials to be able to access it um, through a, this is the readme for the demo. So you can access basically the pod info through this link. So if I do that, uh, it only works in Chrome at the moment, I should have the pod info application. And I could, I don't know if I still have time, I have 20 seconds left. So if I would go in here into the generated product, which is under products and would be changing this value, for example, to two or the message or the color, 
then I could uh, then I could see the change here or a new application would be released. I am out of time though. So uh, this has been secure delivery using Flux and OCM. Thank you very much.